Hi people, it's me, Anya. Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is a Lisa Lean's video, as you know by the title. But before I get into the books, I'd like to say a big thank you for all the support on my last video. Making that video was honestly really difficult for me to film because I wasn't really sure whether or not I should film it. But I made the decision to because I think it's really important to amplify black voices and to heal people out and to just listen to people's experiences even when and especially when they are different from yours so i hope that that video helped you so the first book on this list is the blackboard girls written by ann blakeman and this book helped me see an experience that was different from mine because it follows two girls as they wake up to the terrible explosion in 1986 and that's not something that i really learned a ton about in history in school so that was really, really cool i like the three perspectives there were three perspectives because after the terrible explodes, the two girls cross, they have to go to another city to visit, the, to stay with their grandmother, or one of the girls' grandmother. So the third perspective is the grandmother in 1941. So I really liked this book because A, it gave me insight on something that I didn't really have a whole lot of knowledge about previously. I liked the friendship between the two girls and the whole story itself this flowed really, really well together. And I personally think that this is Anne Blakeman's best book. I've read Prisoner of Night and Fog by her before, and then I DNF the sequel, and then I never read Cradle Angels or whatever that one is called, but this one popped off. It was so, so, so good, and I ended up reading it full stars. The next book is called Bleed Like Water, written by Anna Jolzab, I think. This is a YA romantic contemporary book that follows Susanna, who's training to become an Olympic swimmer. I like this book, and I expected it to be way more like cheesy and romantic than it actually was. It was a solid story, aside from the romance that happened. I really liked like Susanna's like character story. I've never really read a fictional story about somebody who wants to be an Olympian, so that was really, really interesting. And I ended up rating this book three and a half stars because it was a good, solid book. The romance, I would say that it happened a little bit too quickly, but like overall, this book was solid. So if you enjoy romantic, contemporary, sporty books, I would recommend this story because it was solid. The next book on this list is American Royals written by Catherine McGee. This book genuinely surprised me. I wasn't expecting to rate it four stars because I've read Catherine's previous Thousand Floor trilogy and overall I'd rate that trilogy about, you know, three and a half stars. So I wasn't expecting to really, really, really enjoy this book. It's kind of alternate history. So basically instead of George Washington being offered the presidency, he was offered the throne and he was made a king. So now in modern day, this story follows those descendants. There are four perspectives in this story. Samantha, wait, Beatrice, who is going to become queen. Samantha, Beatrice's sibling, who's the spare sibling because she's not in line for the throne. Nina, who's Samantha's best friend. And Daphne, who's kind of like a villainous antagonist character. So there's a tangled web of like romance and stuff because like Beatrice is like falling in love with someone that she's not supposed to. And like, like there's so many, like there's a tangled web of romances. Like for example, Nina likes the prince because Samantha and Beatrice have another sibling who doesn't get a perspective. But honestly, I didn't think that he needed to have one. So that was solid. And Daphne used to date Jefferson. That's the third brother, the sibling, who doesn't have a perspective. I really, really like this story. I was hooked in by all of the different characters' perspectives. I thought it was very, like, diverse, very well done. I really like the sister relationship between Samantha and Beatrice. I'm so excited to see what will happen in Majesty. I wasn't expecting to love this book the way that I did, and I definitely wasn't thinking that I would put this sequel on my TBR, but it is coming up so fast. I think it comes out in September or something. I'm so excited to see what will happen next because I have no idea. This story could go in so many different directions and I'm so excited to see these characters again 
even Daphne, like, you can tell that I really like this book if I'm even looking forward to the antagonistic perspective in Majesty. So, anyway, this book was really, really good. Really, like, a really nice, unexpected surprise. And I'm so excited for the sequel. The next book is Summer in July, which is a middle grade contemporary, and it follows the friendships of two girls, Summer and July, who are looking for a little happiness in the world, when the world can be a little mean. I like this story because I liked the individual characters of Summer and July, and I like their friendship together. I wouldn't say that this book was extremely, like, amazing or awesome or anything. It was just solid. Like, it was a short, pleasant, sweet book. But it wasn't, like, all that. And I don't really know, like, how to pinpoint why it wasn't all that. It just wasn't for me. I didn't really vibe with it more than I vibed with it, if that makes any sense. Like, I wanted to, I kind of wanted to vibe with it a little bit more than I actually did but I didn't. And yeah, so I ended up rating it three and a half stars. That's not to say that that is really bad. That is just solid and yeah, that's all. The next book on this list is called Scab After the Stars, written by Taylor Sim. This is a gender-bent Count of Monte Cristo retelling and it was really, really good. I wasn't expecting to enjoy that and I know that like I wasn't expecting to enjoy it is basically the slogan for this entire video, but it's true. I was not expecting to enjoy this book at all. The world building and the fast paced plot were my favorite parts of the book because they were the most prominent. And this story really reminds me of like Into the Crooked Place because I just really, really enjoyed it. All the different storylines, the character development, the character dynamic between the two like protagonists intertwined so, so well. And I'm genuinely so, so excited to see what will happen in the sequel. Since this is a fantasy duology, the second book will be the last book, which means that Taylor has to wrap up everything in one book, which I don't understand how she's going to do. But I'm so excited to find out because, like, she has so many things to wrap up. But, like, I don't know how she's going to do it. And, oh my gosh, like, I'm so excited to find out what will happen next. And I've never been, it's been a long time since I've been, like, really eagerly anticipating a sequel. So this book was solid, full stars, and I'm so excited, if you didn't know already, to see what will happen next. The next book on this list is called American as Peniel Pie, and it follows Wanka, who's Indian American, and she's learning to find her own voice as she faces prejudice, prejudice, it, racism, in her own town. I really liked this book. I thought it was sweet and cute and like heartwarming and it was solid and it kind of reminded me of like the only black girls in town because it does feature a friendship between Lanka and this new girl who's also Indian and they're the, the only two like Indian girls in their town and friendship wise I would say like this book was a little bit more solid than Summer in July. Like it was really good. I still rated in both books, three and a half stars, but friendship wise, I would prefer this friendship over Summer in July. Don't know why, but this book was good and I really enjoyed it and I would recommend it to anyone who can relate to what Lanka goes through. The next book is called The Last True Poets of the Sea, written by Julia Drake. This is a YA contemporary book and I ended up rating it four stars and I really, really, really liked it. This book was wonderful and lovely, and I just loved it. And the characters were just impeccable. The plot was great. The world building was great. Everything about this book was so, so great. The sapphic romance never felt too cheesy or oversaturated or anything. This book truly lives up to its hype. And I don't really want to explain the synopsis or anything, because I feel like this is one of those stories that you should go into with the lowest expectations ever and just come out the other side with an absolutely amazing story and everyone who everyone who has read the story has told me that it is absolutely amazing and I absolutely agree with its hype. I was kind of afraid that this book wouldn't live up to its hype just because I've heard so many people talk about it and I've never really heard anybody give it lower than a four star rating but this book lived up to its hype. It kind of reminded me of like 
We All Okay meets Worlds in Deep Blue. And if you really enjoyed those, those two books, you will really enjoy this book. Because it is genuinely so, so good. And I want to read it again. It also kind of reminds me of Summer of Salt with the atmospheric like world building. So basically, if you enjoyed We Are Okay, Summer of Salt, and Worlds in Deep Blue, you would enjoy this book. Or if you would enjoy this book, you would enjoy those other books if you haven't read those books yet. So basically, this book is so, so, so good. It's so good. The last book is called oh, The Court of Miracles written by Kestrel Glant. This is a YA fantasy retelling of Les Mis, and it follows Nina, who will do anything to protect her sister. I ended up reading this book three stars because, like, the fast-paced plot and the world building hooked me in from the beginning, but it didn't hold me there, you know? I felt like how everything was happening way, way too fast that I didn't really have time to be, like, introduced to these characters. I felt like the characters' development kind of fell short, and even though, like, the protagonist's development, like, other than Nina's, like, motives and her goals, I didn't really get introduced to her, like, personality, if that makes any sense. And, like, I don't know. I didn't really buy, like, the dynamic between Nina and any of her friends. Like, I don't even want to call them friends, because, like, I don't really know. I wasn't sold on it. I wasn't sold on the story at all. And I kind of, like, I finished this book feeling very lukewarm and underwhelmed. And I don't know. I don't want to say this book disappointed me because I didn't really have high expectations going into it. But this book was just not good. And I kind of regret reading it. So, so in conclusion, the best books that I read in this list were The Last Two Poets of the Sea and American Royals. The worst book that I read is The Court of Miracles, and I would recommend all of the books in this list, except for The Court of Miracles, because that book, I honestly, like I said, I regret reading it. So, anyway, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, comment down below your favorite book that you've read recently, or like, if you, you're interested in any of these books, if you've read them, what are your thoughts, and yeah, thanks for watching, subscribe for new, bye!